Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday live stream. We've got a lot of things to go over, so let's just jump right in, shall we? So first of all, Sunday, got to love Sundays because it's pretty much a discount day. And uh, we can see a little bit of red in the market. Not a big thing. This is usually, I, I feel like this is usually what happens on a Sunday. The last two Sundays is what it's been. So take it as you see fit. Uh, I see it as like a day when my when dollar cost averaging doesn't cost so damn much. So a uh, lot of uh, deals to be had. Who knows if tomorrow, if the deals get even redder or if they get green, it's crypto. Tomorrow it could be up 50% or it could be down 70%. Who knows? But uh, for me, I think uh, we're again in the right place at the right time. And also I've been getting a lot of, uh, requests to talk about Puerto Rico. So I know that uh, we are getting into the bull run <laughs> when I get a lot more requests about, you know, what's a good idea for like relocation and what's happening. And I've gotten like five or six emails, like just in the last 48 hours. So I'm just going to tell you guys, there was a video I did. It's pretty comprehensive. It's about almost an hour long. It's called Puerto Rico and taxes one year update. I linked it in the description. You can check it out. I will tell you one thing. And that is that I don't know where you guys are at. I don't know where you are across the country, but today is going to be a great day. I got family in town. We're going to go to the beach, which is fantastic. I mean, we're in December. And when I say that the weather is pretty much the exact same every single day, it's like Groundhog's Day here. It's always the same every single day. And you got to love it. So that's uh, to take care of that piece. And then uh, let's just talk about what the thumbnail and title brought you here. Metrics. So we covered this on the Q&A section yesterday, and I want to talk about this again today because we're going to talk about Arbitrum, we're going to talk about Avalanche, we're going to talk about Solana, we're going to talk about Cardano, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, and all these different metrics that we can see that could potentially guide us into who's winning the adoption wars. Now, there is no clear winner. Obviously, we're super early, but I want you guys to really pay attention to these metrics we're going to talk about because as we move into the bull run, and beyond, I think this is the more important thing, just going, hey, price went up, I should buy into that. If you want to do that, there's a ton of meme coins I can sell you. Anyhow, so Arbitrum, this was actually from uh, Friday. Today is Sunday, it's from December 15th. And it talks about Arbitrum suffers a partial outage, which I got to tell you is never good. That's never a good look for anybody. And what happened was there was a surge in traffic. There was a partial outage. Uh, this is on Friday. The problem involved Arbitrum sequencer. Sequencers are key components of layer two networks serving to process and order transactions and blocks that are then added to the core network, which is Ethereum, obviously in this case, because it's a layer two solution. And I was like, when I first read this, I'm like, well, okay, that's not a big deal. It happens, you know, these things, you know, growing pains, whatever else. But I missed this part yesterday. Sequencers suffered a two hour outage in early June as well. So you had an outage in June and then you got an outage in December. Again, uh, you'd hope they fix these things. And uh, since we're so early, I'm not going to pass judgment. And, you know, you, you might say, well, is Rob being biased? Of course he is. Because Rob, me, I've got a big bag of Arbitrum. I want this to succeed. I want Solana to succeed. I want Cardano to succeed. I want the other 70 cryptos that I own to succeed. But you got to be honest and say, hey, that ain't good. And uh, you got to fix that as we get in the bull run and when more mass adoption comes in. So this was from the official uh, X account, Arbitrum. They said, yeah, the, our Arbitrum 1 screen was up and running after a temporary outage starting at blah, blah, blah. Team is actively investigating, but we can confirm that a sustained surge of inscriptions trigger the sequencer to stop relaying transactions properly. I got to tell you, transcriptions or what are called ordinals, you may hear the Bitcoin maximalists losing their head about that on uh, Bitcoin. They're just ordinals. They're the ability to transcribe or write in the blockchain, also to pretty much have NFTs within the blockchain. Bitcoin maxis hate it. This has gone on a different, a lot of different chains. Near had this done. Polygon had this done. Arbitrum now has this done. The difference is, is pay attention to those networks that don't go down because even though there's a massive influx of network activity, take a look at the ones that uh, weather the storm. Just saying, that's what it is. And we can take a look here like, well, what are we talking about? What, what kind of transactions? How much was it that really made them st stutter? A stutter step. And we can see here, this is from Arbiscan, right from their official scanner. So on the 16th, Saturday, which was you know Friday in the 16th, we can see that, yeah, there it goes. Uh, total transactions were around, let's just say 5 million. We're going to round up. Five, it's between 4.4 and five months. Just remember, I want you to remember this number, five million daily transactions. Five million were daily, daily, the daily transactions. 
five million were the daily transactions, which caused them to go down for a couple hours and they fixed it. So that's quite a bit, right? Can't deny that. So then I got this uh, this morning and it talked about how Avalanche's fees are pretty high, which I gotta tell you, I also own Avalanche. I own a boatload of it and I want it to succeed as well. And a lot of these different gaming companies and Web3, like Shrapnel and those games, they're building on Avalanche. And the reason why, because it's pretty awesome. Now there's something with transactions, the transaction fees, what happened? So this was from Rick McCracken. And he said, hey, uh, the transaction fees was uh, 1.4 AVAX. That was the max fee. Now it could be a little bit lower, but the maximum is 1.4. Right now, Avalanche is roughly around $42. So that was about 53 bucks. Actually, this must've been a little bit ago because now it was 38 at that point, I think. Well, whatever. 53 bucks is a lot, let's be honest. Even for Ethereum, that's a lot. And I was like, that cannot be right. That can't be right because that's way too much. And uh, Sparty Basketball says, hey, I've never paid anywhere close to that on AVAX. And he sent me this, oh, all right. I said, where can I find this? And uh, he didn't say it, but he goes, hey, look, he goes, from my Avalanche wallet, you can see the fee to send two AVAX is 0 0.009, which is 38 cents, which I'm like, eh, it's still 38 cents. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> if AVAX, if, if Avalanche hit its all time high, that'd be a couple bucks or more. So I'm like, eh, all right. But then, uh, well, I'll get into, I'll get into what I did. And I just tested this because what he did was, and he's right, when you transfer from a wallet to a wallet in Avalanche, pretty cheap, right? But what if you want to use DEX? What if you want to buy an NFT? What if you want to use AVAX for something else? What's the price? We'll get to that in a quick a quick minute. But uh, so I sent this, this tweet out and immediately uh, people are either supporting or attacking. And really it just comes down to this. You have to understand why people attack or why they pile on or why they support. It's because they have a huge bag of something, right? So if I am heavily into tomato coin, right? And tomato coin is a layer one solution. And someone talks negatively about another layer one solution. I'm like, yeah, you're right. That chain sucks. I want that chain to go down. And uh, that's it. Now, if you own AVAX, you have a big bag of that. And you're like, hey, you know what? Don't talk about my my L1. That's my, that is, that is, that's what I bought. How can you talk about that? I did all of my research. I did my own research and I bought it. How can you say it's, it's negative? Hey man, facts are facts. That's really what it comes down to. And that's uh, pretty much what it is. So I get this, this guy's making fun on AVAX, trying to pump his own Solana bag. Coincidentally, I do own Solana, but I also own everything else. Don't fall in the trap. Not sure why people fall in such stupid YouTuber trap and do your own research, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So yeah, I get it. I get it. No one wants to have anybody, ne anything negative talk about their chain. Gotcha. So what I did was I said, look, I got to test this out myself. So I went to the official website, avax.network. And I said, hey, what's the most... Uh, as far as the platform, what is the uh, most popular DEX? I picked the first one, Trader Joe, which I've used before. And I used Trader Joe, and here's my fee. My fee was two bucks and $2.35. Now that is a heck of a difference between, how much was this, $53? That's a huge difference, right? But let's be honest, it's still two bucks for one transaction. That's kind of pricey. So what I want to do was, I want to do this live with you and do this again. So. I have my wallet connected, which is my MetaMask, because with MetaMask, you can, have, you can have Ethereum, you can have Arbitrum, you can have BNB chain, you can also have AVAX. And the max that I have on there, I have 0 0.10 AVAX. Why do I only have that much? It's because I'm not ridiculous and keep $10 million in AVAX in a hot wallet. That's stupid. So I have to keep very little. I'm going to swap this. Maybe it's going to be better. <sighs> yeah. Uh, you guys, I don't think you can see this, but it's about seven bucks. So now actually the gas price has actually gone up and it's going to likely in 30 seconds. Gas is $7 and that's AVAX. So look, uh, I want you to try this yourself. I link this in the description. I believe Trader Joe. If not, if you just go to AVAX or just go to Trader Joe XYZ.com, you'll find it. And I want you to test it out because you shouldn't just rely on me. I'm just some guy talking to his computer. But those are pretty high prices when we're, sw we're swapping things around. So just letting you know. And that will lead me to the conclusion, which is this. Metrics. These are important. And I think, like, again, we just look at, like, the price action go, well, the price is going up, so it's pretty awesome. That's not really what it is. If we can, we, let's all be honest. 
these prices can be manipulated. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of money to move this around. Market makers can do whatever they want to. This is a pretty big planet. We've got a lot of people that can do a lot of different crazy, shady things. So what I want to take a look at, and again, these on-chain metrics can also be manipulated. That's very true. But I want to take a look at is, and I've always said this, on-chain data can be manipulated. But if you want to see who's really adopting, take a look at who's paying those fees. And if people are paying the fees, that's mean they're paying with their wallet. But let's take a peek behind the curtain. So this is a website. It's called uh, Artemis.xyz forward slash chains. I linked this in the description so you can do this yourself. And what I wanted to do was I want to start with daily active addresses. What is that? Daily active addresses, the number of unique wallet addresses sending in on-chain transactions in a rolling 24-hour period. I want to start with Cardano. I like Cardano. I love the community. There's very few communities out there that are that, uh, what is that, strength in numbers or, or that exuberant about uh, the project itself. So you can see that in Cardano, since September 18th, uh, daily active addresses, 37,000. That's pretty good. And, you know, 26, 42, something around there. And it's, it's gone up. And that's pretty great, right? 76,000 was uh, its peak so far in the last well, three months or so. Pretty good, right? Now I want to start layering things on top of that to show you where we're at. So this is Polygon ZK EVM or ZK rollups. And actually, Polygon is lower than that. Polygon doesn't have that many, but they're just rolling it out. What about Polygon Proof of Stake? All right, a little bit different. In blue, we can see there's Cardano at 30,000, or, the, or the height. Cardano's at 72,000. Polygon, 334,000. So that's a, what, uh, 5x, 4.5x of what it does on a daily basis? All right, well, it is what it is. How about Arbitrum? And Arbitrum, the one that just went down, matter of fact, it's pretty damn close to Cardano as well. How about Ethereum? Now things start getting a little bit different. Ethereum, along with Polygon, 300, 320,000. Again, something over there. What about Optimism? A little bit lower. BNB chain. Now look at this. This is where it gets a little crazy. I'm going to get out of here. BNB chain has roughly a million transactions excuse me, a million, a million daily active addresses. That's a far cry from the things that our Ethereum are doing, even with their layer two solutions. I guess it's not a far cry, because if you take Ethereum and you take Polygon, that's roughly 700,000, and you take Arbitrum. So yeah, I could actually see that. Yeah, they're, on, they're on par because of their layer two solution. What about Aptos? Aptos isn't doing so great. Aptos recently, 64,000. All right. How about Near? Now Near. And again, pay attention to the ones that don't go down. Near has never gone down. Near had the largest TGE token generation event of all time in all crypto. If you remember, I talked about this six months ago, when or no, it was over a year ago, I think, uh, when the, the, the token generation event of Sweatcoin was, because Sweatcoin was a was a Web two app, and they had over 150 million users, up to 200 million. It was the number. Actually, no, it was in the top five app globally for health and fitness. Of course, it would fluctuate. And they took all those people, put them all on chain and said, here's your rewards. Now, they piecemealed it out, but it didn't go down. And that's why I like Near. I think it's a pretty solid chain. So Near daily active uh, addresses, roughly a million, 1.25 million. And then... Da, 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 da. So then, and then what about base is pretty low. Bitcoin is pretty high, around a million, 900,000. Avalanche, daily active addresses, not that great. Not, not a lot. Not like it's it's awful, but it's at 67,000, all right? And then SWE is down here at around 48,000. And lastly, Solana. Actually, Solana is at 1.09 million and is just under near for active addresses and is above BNB chain. So pay attention to that. That's just the active addresses. Now we take a look at uh, daily transactions. Look at this one, Cardano. And of course, yes, I understand the EUTXO, unspent transaction output. So there's a lot of different transactions that are put in there, got you. But if we take a look at it, 
Cardano, let me just put them all together. Polygon, Arbitrum, Ethereum, Polygon. There's a BNB, Aptos, Near, Base, Bitcoin, Sweet. What was that number I, I want you guys to remember? Five million, right? Five million caused Arbitrum to, to, to stutter. And we can see it right here in this little blue part here. Arbitrum, 5.09 million. But look at the ones above it. Look at the ones that haven't shuttered and stopped. Solana leads the pack, daily transaction, 25.8 million. I know some people say, well, some of those aren't really transactions. They're just going back and forth. And of course, they're voting versus on-chain transactions. I understand that. They're still transactions. I'm just saying. 25 million. Let's say they fudge the numbers. Take half that, 12 million. Yes, it has shut down. But when's the last time it shut down? Someone told me February, but uh, I don't remember being shut down in February. I remember in 2022, it uh, shut down like three or four times, but they fixed it. Maybe Avalanche will fix that. Maybe Arbitrum will fix that. Not for sure. I'm just saying, pay attention. And then, of course, what else we have? SWE, 9 million. Wow. Daily transactions, pretty good. Avalanche, 6. Arbitrum, 5. BNB chain, only 4.6. Polygon, 4. And so on and so forth for daily transactions. So these are the things I want you to, to pay attention to. And then lastly, fees. Because again, there's two parts of the to, to fees. One is that the reason why the fees are so high or people talk about Ethereum because it's so great is because the fees are ridiculously high. I don't see people mass adopting this and wanting to pay 25, 30 bucks per transaction fee on the layer one solution. And even people say, well, Rob, we're the layer two solution. Well, if you're on the Ethereum chain to, to bridge it over, you still got to pay like 25 bucks, which is fine, which is fine if you've got a big wad of things that you want to move over. But if you're trying just to move one thing over, it doesn't work. Everything has to be layer two solution. It just, to me, it just makes me wonder. I still own Ethereum. I still own Arbitrum. I still own Polygon. I don't care who wins. I diversify. So the fees are going to be high in that regard. And then you got to take a look at, well, you know, is it just that very cheap? So I... We'll put them all together. And of course, if we divide, if we divide the daily transactions by the fees, we can kind of get the number. I wish they would have that here. Much, much easier for me to explain this. But you're gonna see that. Uh, oh my god. For fees, Ethereum crushes a lot. Actually, where is uh let me let me screw back here? Ah, there it is. Ethereum is at, this is on December 13th. Ethereum is 12.41 million. Bitcoin is 4.8. Avalanche, you know what? Let me do this. To visualize this better, where the feeds are coming, just go to cryptofeeds.info and you can see who the winners are. The last 24 hours, actually, it's Bitcoin. Why does Bitcoin have such high fees? I don't think people are moving Bitcoin around. I think it's the inscriptions, the ordinals. People are writing on there, the, essentially the Bitcoin NFTs. So it's actually almost double of Ethereum in the last 24 hours. That's crazy. Ethereum's at 13 million. Uniswap is 2 million. Why? Because I know people say, but Rob, it's all L2s. No, it's not. It's not L2. Not all L2s. I think a lot of people are doing L1 transactions on Ethereum, whatever they're doing, and especially like NFTs and those other things. That's why I got 2.3 million. And Arbitrum is a layer one solution. Or excuse me, a layer two solution. And they're at 1.1 million. That's the power of inscriptions. Of course, you get a lot in fees, but sometimes it'll shut your whole network down for a couple hours. Again, not a good look. And you're gonna see, you know, which one. There's Trader Joe, that was Avalanche, like we just talked about. The reason why Trader Joe is up there is because for whatever reason, they've got a lot of uh, price in, in fees. Let's see if they can fix it. I don't think uh, gamers are gonna wanna pay that high, high amount for every different transaction they do. Dogecoin's lower, Cardano's lower, and the reason why they're lower is because it's not so damn cheap or not so damn expensive. Where is uh Solana on here? Hmm. For some reason, I don't know why Solana doesn't like to play nice with everybody for the fees, but if you go to Soul Scan, SoulScan.io and go to analytics. Fee tracker. Where are we at? Okay. December 17th. Total fees in Seoul, 939. It's not that much. That's in that's that's not dollars, that's in Seoul. And then these are 
transaction or non-transaction. So you can just see that people are using it, but the transaction fees, I've used Solana and the different DEXs, it's around a penny or so. That doesn't mean it can't go up. But these are the things that I'd like everybody to take a little bit more closely, closer look at, which are fees, revenue is fine, daily active addresses and daily transactions. And of course you can take a look at TVL, but these are the things I think is gonna bring us into the next evolution about what is actually being adopted and what's not. So that is it for that. Hopefully that's uh, made a little bit more sense. I think it comes kind of rambling, but we want you to think about that in the comment section. And then also let's do a giveaway. So I did, uh, did a deep dive video on a launch pad called Tencent. I like the Tencent launch pad. I've used them for two different projects. Uh, one was Everdome and I got into Everdome and I got into fame. We talked about that in the uh, video itself and the gains that I had and you know how it actually worked out. But I like it because it's, it has a launch pad. It's got a two or three different uh, just games lined up on, a, on, a co on top of a couple of different other products coming out, which you can get into early. But again, I talk about the risk. It's super risky. This is very true. And one thing I like about it is that, of course, you can get into these, these launches, but the token itself, you can also stake it and earn a yield on that. And then also they do free airdrops, which everybody seems to love right now. So what I did was I put out a tweet and I said, hey, if you want 5,000 uh, Tencent tokens, which I think Tencent tokens are like about 50 cents right now. Um, so I'm gonna give away 1,000 tokens to five winners, which are roughly like 500 bucks, congratulations. So I'm gonna use my favorite tool uh, Twitter picker. And people will ask me, Rob, why don't you just pick us right here on uh, on YouTube? It's because well, there's a couple reasons. First of all, I wanted the Tangent giveaway. I had to physically ship that to your address. And I don't think people are wanna, want to put that, their physical address in the chat for everybody to see. People just don't wanna do that. And second of all, for like this one, when it's an actual, I need your uh, Binance wallet uh, address. Some people don't want to give the address out. They're like, no, I don't want to give out a public address because people can see everything that I've actually bought. So I'm like, fine, we'll just do Twitter picker and just go from there. So let's do that right now. Uh, uh, uh. So there was a tweet, winner count, I want five. Ba -ba. Profile must have a picture. They must follow news asset and 10 set, blah, 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 tweet count. Okay, continue. Wow, 850 entries loaded, uh, continue. Now let's begin the draw. Cool. So congratulations to Tonic and Kedama. Nailed it. Babs, Kikoto, Irma Schultz, and Kurihiro. I will uh, reach out to you via Twitter or X. I will DM you. Um, and I'm just going to ask for your uh, Binance or your uh, BNB chain wallet address. Uh, be very aware if someone else contacts you and says, hey, I need your, your secret passphrase. I'd like to have your mnemonic phrase so I can send you some. That's a scam. So uh, this will be for my official account, my account over on Twitter. We have, I have 160,000 followers. So if you get a message from me, double check that and make sure it's the authentic one. So I'll reach out myself and go from there. But that's it for today. So look, if you guys like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.